Okay, so we're in the Gospel of Mark, and we've just been coding up to chapter 7, and um, we're partially through that chapter, and we've got so far 870 codes so far for the Gospel of Mark, and um, now we're going to sort, so we take the parts that we want to sort, and of course I've numbered each of the codes, and we just go all the way to the top. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on here. I just don't want to overwrite this work by mistake. Of course, you can undo it, but... Okay, there we go. It's much quicker. And right-click. We're in Google Sheets. You could be doing this in Excel. And sort the range. And there is a dot, a header row. And we want to sort by open code. And there it's sorted by open code. So, what we want to do is we want to look at the codes and see if something comes... If something emerges, as you say, in classic grounded theory, does some concept emerge which gives us some inkling as to what the purpose, the main concern of the writer of the Gospel of Mark was when he wrote the Gospel, or why he wrote the Gospel? Okay, we cannot make assumptions that it was to spread the, the good news. We cannot make assumptions that was maybe the character of Jesus in the Gospel, his purpose. But you cannot assume that that was the writer's um, main concern. He might have had another concern. We don't know. And that's what we're trying to discover. And this is where preconceiving and um, abductive reasoning has to be put aside. We've got to go through this. So what I did last evening was I went through it and I bolded certain concepts that uh, sort of sprang out at me or gave some kind of a, emerged as it were, some kind of an idea um, to me concerning, in other words, I'm putting myself in the writer's position. Um, this is where theoretical sensitivity comes in, is I'm not trying to assume that I know what the writer's trying to do, but I'm saying to myself, well, um, this person has written this, and what kind of, what kind of thematic or what kind of um, um, conceptual ideas are crucial or seem to be crucial to the actual writing of the gospel. All right, so first of all, I came across the very first concept at the top alphabetically was, was code number 381, but was accepting. And um, I'm not sure if I can find quickly here where it talks about accepting. Yeah, they're talking about sowing the seeds and those who are sown on good um, ground, those who hear the word and accept it. Okay, so this is like hearing a message and accepting it. So th that kind of, I'm thinking now, why, why would the gospel writer have written the gospel of Mark? So perhaps it's so that people will accept what he's saying. I mean, let's say, let's admit after all, if you're writing anything, anybody who's writing anything, you want somebody to accept what you've written. Okay, so, yeah, sort of coincidentally, it was the first code in this list, but I thought that might be salient, so I, so I bolded it, and then what I did is, um, I went to another sheet, and I put in accepting there, and I just said main, it's, it's what I'm calling a, ma a possible main code or main category, and this was my subcategories, okay, and there are some subs down there, um, but we'll just continue with this. So, let me just get back to where I was. Okay, so, just to cut a long story short, I went down the list, and you can see the different words. Okay, um, asking, baptizing. These are all functions that happened in the story. Not necessarily, um, these are not necessarily actions or functions that the writer was, in terms of his purpose or her purpose, that the writer was trying to convey. Okay, becoming known. This is, in, in this passage here, it talks about um, Jesus becoming known amongst the, um, to Herod or whoever, amongst the people. So that seemed to, that fits in with I mean, if you're writing a gospel, why are you doing it? You want this. You want your work to become known. 
So I thought, okay, that seems to be um, that it could be important. And so I put that in there. So I'm not going to revert to this sheet every time, but this is the whole list that I came up with. Okay, and I'll just show you quickly. Go down here. Um, beginning to proclaim, beginning to send out, beginning to teach. All right, and there's beheading and beholding. Beholding is like, listen, behold, the farmer went out to sow. Behold seemed like a crucial thing in terms of, Mark is making his character, Jesus, um, say to people, behold, listen, you know, um, give heed to what is being said. So within the narrative, within the story, Mark is making his, um, the, the listeners to Jesus take heed to what he's saying. But indirectly, I thought, okay, it seems like Mark is wanting the readers of his gospel to also behold and to listen. All right, so let's just keep on going down. You can see the different words, bringing, calling was another one. I'm not going to go into the background of each of these. Um, there, are a lot of, there was a lot of coming to and all of that. Commanding, um, like what was commanded in the Old Testament and so on. And um, sort of in a subtle way that the Mark is creating like a new command line or a new commanding for people in his message about Jesus. And crying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, again appealing to people. And uh, it's the character of John the Baptist was crying in the wilderness, but likewise Mark's gospel it, um, could be seen as be, as positioning as, as having a purpose of crying out to the world for attention, um, for for the message to be be believed. Okay, so let's just keep going down. So many of these words seem to function within the story or within the narrative of Jesus' doings. Um, people were afraid. Uh, and people were following Jesus. Okay, following also like a crucial thing. So people followed Jesus, and potentially Mark wants people to follow his message. So that concept is quite strong there. Forgiving, that is something within the narrative. So this could be a part of maybe the resolution of the main concern um, that Mark has in terms of his whatever his main concern is. And gathering to excuse me, I'm just drinking some water. Gathering to um, lots of words, yeah. Handing down that was like the when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and that about the handing down of the law to them. It's almost like indirectly Mark is saying that I'm giving something new to be handed down to other generations, to future generations. And harvesting is, is obviously, um, can be seen in the same light. So all of these concepts, most of these concepts, they kind of interlink with each other. It's almost as if all of these are um, that one main concern, one main concern um, or one main variable should emerge out of this. Uh, we're only halfway or not even halfway through the Gospel of Mark. So I might be completely, we could com be completely off track here. But I'm just doing like a, a stock take to see whether something begins to emerge here so that we can be aware of it as we go through. Because this whole idea of um, the writer of Mark creating something that he wants people to accept. I mean, it's not only logical, but it seems to be patently um, visible now. So these could be, if these were all conceptualized into one concept, these could be representative of a whole lot of indicators 
which could essentially be interchangeable in terms of classic grounded theory, um, also pointing to the main concern or the core variable. Okay, so harvesting and healing, healing like wouldn't it doesn't wouldn't seem to be like the main thing that Mark wants to convey to people, but it is one of the main things of his character of Jesus. Okay, so it could be a part of the resolution of the main concern. Okay, so and making healthy likewise. Hearing, hearing is a part of what I think of, of Mark's um, possible main concern. Holding to, like holding to the, the scriptures. Honoring, honoring um, parents, honoring Jesus, or honoring the message that Mark is bringing. And then um, increasing, interpreting, knowing, listening. Although these are all inside the narrative, it's like, it's almost like an echo that the writer of the Gospel of Mark is, is possibly allowing to occur within his writing um, to, to, to convey to us what it is that he's trying to do. Why, why is he writing the Gospel? Marveling. perceiving or understanding, like Jesus said that he sp speaks in parables, but only his disciples, who he will explain them to, will perceive what is going on. And it's almost like this is like an echo again of the writer of Mark saying that I'm giving the story to you so that you can be a part of the, the um, elect disciples of Jesus, so that, so that you can know what those disciples didn't know and what Jesus revealed to them. Plundering, like the kingdom of God being plundered or whatever, um, receiving, recognizing, reporting, uh, rooting, a lot of saying, seeding, you can see where this is going, um, shadowing, shepherding. Shepherding within Jesus, shepherding the flock, but Mark, in a sense, trying to create something which will shepherd people into a certain way of thinking. Now, we don't really know what that way of thinking is, and we don't really know what the main concern is, and we don't know how he resolved the main concern. So we mustn't assume that it's necessarily a religious thing. Okay, we don't know <laughs> what Mark's actual purpose was for writing. So we can't assume it, but I'm trying to see what comes to us out of the data. So we're not preconceiving anything. We're trying to see what of the data, what of the data speaks and the codes that we've got from the data, what of that speaks to us as people trying to interpret and understand the main issue that Mark has for writing. And we still don't have it 100% clear. He obviously wants to convince us of something, but that's what the main concern would obviously be. But what it is and why is he giving us the story of Jesus? I'm not, and again, I'm being theoretically sensitive, but I'm not preconceiving. But if you believe in like Roman provenance, um, the Roman provenance theory of the Gospels, that the Gospels were written to placate the Jewish rebels um, and to to introduce like a peaceful kind of religion to substitute Judaism for that. That could be what the main concern of this writer is, but it's got to come from here. It's It, it has to emerge from the data. We're only not even halfway through all the data. So something is emerging and um, we have to be open to it. But we can't assume Roman provenance and we can't assume um, uh, 
purely religious uh, motives, like maybe Paul was very sincere, um, not that he had anything to do with the Gospel of Mark, but um, his writings might have been used as a source for the composition of the Gospel of Mark. Now let's just see here. Hearing they may hear and not understand, but the disciples, the, the apostles are given to understand. So again, this echo of the disciples having an in on what Jesus was thinking and um, teaching. And Mark essentially, ostensibly, giving his readers an in on the real meaning of things. But what that real meaning is, we don't know yet. So understanding... I also picked that out, and then that was it. So I hope this helps you guys with, um, and please share with me any anything in uh, um, response to this. But um, it's nothing conclusive, but I'm sharing it with you as I go along, and I will do a follow-up video on this so you can see where this whole idea goes, and then hopefully together we can discover what the main concern is of the gospel. Um, writer's writing of the Gospel of Mark and how he resolved that main concern. So thanks very much. Have a good day further. Bye.